Hi guys, um, Dean again, BTN. As you can see, the uh, the weather's not uh, quite what it was this morning. A bit overcast. I just sort of take this opportunity, guys, to um, show you a few of my knives. Uh, I'm not in the business of collecting knives. Uh, the knives that I have are all used. Uh, in fact, I spoke to Sandy only um, was it last week and told him that. Um, all of my knives, and he's seen seen the knives, even the one that uh, yeah, he made me. You know, they're all used, all used. But uh, I just thought, to, like I say, take this opportunity to uh, show you a couple of knives. I've got um, I've got bushcraft knives, and uh, I've got survival knives. Uh, a lot of people just use a knife. A knife is a knife, but um, I obviously um, tend to use them for whatever they're designed for, really. But um, let's start. To, I'll start to, uh, to, uh, at the bushcraft end, I suppose. It's probably best. Hopefully you guys can uh, see me there, but um, basically I've got this one. This is one of my first knives that uh, that I had. Uh, this is, um, let's have a look, uh, Wrights, A Wrights of England. Um, it's a nice knife. Uh, it's um, it's about four, just over four mil, I think, uh, as the spine, as you can, you'll probably see it there. Um, it is basically the design of a bushcraft knife. If you look at it, it's similar to the design of uh, the uh, Woodlaw knife. Um, but yeah, so it doesn't. Uh, I've been quite happy with this for, for, for some years as a bushcraft knife. It feels good to the hand. Um, it's not very heavy. It comes with a nice sheath, which I'll uh, talk to you about in a second. But uh, yeah, it, it holds a decent. You have to work hard to. Um, Get an edge on it, but when it do, it, it sort of sits uh, it sits well and it holds a uh, a good edge for, for, for some time. But uh, yeah, it's one of the knives that's probably been um, semi-retired now, to be honest. But uh, yeah, there's there's that knife. It's um, like I say, it's quite well made. Uh, I can't remember how much this one was, but uh, like I say, it's quite well made. Um, let's have a look at the sheath. I'll put that one down for a second. As you can see, the sheath there is um, just a, a standard leather sheath. Uh, I've got a couple of rivets in the bottom there, but um, what's that? there's the old uh, rod, the fire stick as we all call it. Um, yeah, the lightning conductor. <laughs> um, first here and rod, it's um, quite nice, nice little hand, you know, nice little uh, wooden uh, wooden knob on there. Um, the only thing I would say about this knife in criticism, um, it's great, and you can see it's a well worked knife. But it's just not finished off. I think it's mass produced. That's probably why. And there's just not the TLC that's gone into it. So um, yeah, but you can see that. I'm sure. You... So right, let's let's move on to a to another knife. Still sort of using the theme of uh, bushcraft. Um, this is a a Karen a Karen Do or something. Yeah, Karen Do knife by the looks of it. Can't quite read it. But um, I use this as a standby knife. Now I have this in my bushcraft. Um, rucksack. It holds a very, very good edge. It's very, very sharp, um, and it, like I say, it feels well. Yeah, it's, uh, it holds a good edge. Um, it's uh, good to the hand. Feels lovely to the hand. Actually, it's very slim line, and uh, feels nice in the hand. Um, you know, especially for uh, yeah, for, for working it hard, chest lever, etc. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice knife. I don't think you'd give it much grief, and I certainly wouldn't try batting in with it. But um, as you can see, the spine there is very. Thin. Let me get a close up of that. You can see the um, you can see the spine there. Uh, that's probably three mil, but I don't think it'd stand up to um, some of the grief that obviously is needed with uh, with bushcraft batting in and levering and alike. Uh, the sheath. Let's have a quick look at that. It's obviously uh, leather. I wouldn't say it's as good a leather as the um, the right knife that we saw, the A right knife we saw a second ago. But this one, the carabiner there. Uh, this one's got a first and rod on it, um, and uh, a little sharpener there. It's a diamond impregnated sharpener. Um, bit of a nightmare to get out and in there, but uh, yeah. So there's that one. Um, again, like I said, it's uh, standby knife. It's not something I'd want to use as my primary cutting tool but uh, as as we all know in prepping or bushcraft you've always got to have a primary and secondary so that's um, definitely a secondary knife i think in my my opinion for what it's worth so there's that one let's go on to another knife now there's a, a knife that i i got hold of from um uh, i think i got this from henny haynes and this is uh it's quite a nice knife this one is the um 
it's the bushcraft knife but it's from tops and it's the the brothers of bushcraft knife this one um yeah it's got a it's got a, a plasticky type um, i'm not quite sure what it's a cadex or something they call it um sheath uh, it's quite a nice sheath it's very hard so obviously you can't damage the knife etc it clips in under its own i don't know if you can see and hear that it clips in under its own sort of way so there's no clasp or anything else to hold it in but this knife um, again it's got a fire steel there um, which fits in there nice and snug it's never come out it's got a got a nice fit there um, and the knife itself good strong knife good strong knife very thick it comes with uh, for lighting fire by friction you've got a bearing block there and and there on the handle it doesn't create that much friction. I have used it as such, and it doesn't create that much friction. So, I mean, it's quite good for that. It's also got things unique to this knife and this design. It's got like a thumb, you see there, I don't know if you guys can see it. It's got a thumb mark there. And again, if I turn it over, thumb mark there. Now, and that's for, um, as you can see there, you put your thumb there when you're doing fine work or, or cutting, meat preparation maybe. And again there for cutting away from you. I assume chest lever grip there. Um, so yeah, I mean it, it makes sense. Um, I recently had a bit of damage done to this one. There was a, I, you can't see it now, but just there, there was a bit of a chunk taken out of there. I say a chunk, a, a tiny little chip. And when Sandy was spending some time with me, I asked his advice, and he pointed me where to go. He really knows his stuff. Does uh, does Jack Law? Um, yeah, pointed me in the right direction, and I've cut it right back, and now um, reworked the edge. And it, again, it's as good as new. So that's uh, that's lovely. Again, this one here, I'd miss that actually. It's got a bit of a grip there for your for your thumb. I don't know if you can see that. If I hold that close up, there you go. You can see it just here, just here. It's got like a ribbed effect there. So when you're doing fining work, I presume you put your thumb there and yeah. But um, something else on the rear of the knife, uh, sort of the pommel end. You've got uh, this groove here is cut in there for for working with the um, striker. So. That's good. There's a lot of little bits and pieces. Some may say it's a gimmick, but I mean, it's a big, strong, as far as I'm concerned, it's a big, strong knife. You could really give this some grief, and I have. Really battened with this one. Um, really pushed it. So, um, yeah, good knife. And, uh, and the sheath's nice because it's got a clip on the back. And what's nice about that is clip it onto your belt, and it's uh, in that sort of, yeah and that sort of application on your belt and if you you know somebody's come in or something or you you don't want it to be seen you can literally turn it around on your belt like that tuck your jumper over the top and it's there or indeed if you're bending down doing a lot of work in the wood you can uh, you know clip it on yourself well let me just stand up so if that was on your belt there like that you know all like that even you know you could have it on a belt so it's gone from you know that sort of angle there um yeah it's gone from that sort of angle uh, to that angle, but um, again, some people might say that it's a gimmick, but uh, I think it's a good idea, I suppose. But um, yeah, that's uh, so that's that knife. Um, this knife now, I mean, this goes back some time. I was given this by the Queen, <laughs> if you know what I mean, with the MOD. Um, I had a couple of knives, but this one, this has got some history. Um, I'm going to take it round to Sandy's. I'm supposed to be going round to see Sandy either this week or, or certainly next. So I'm just going to take this and be cheeky and sort of uh, ask him for his advice and see if he could cut me a nice edge on there. Because um, it's sentimental, it's a big old bruiser this one. I think they call it the jackknife. Um, in fact, I did see uh, Wessex Blades. You all know Wessex Blades. I think Wessex Blades did a recut of one of these, the jackknife, and I think he did a fantastic job. So, um, yeah, so it can be done. But like I say, it's sentimental, it's a very heavy knife. Um, as far as a survival knife, yeah, this one, yeah, I would put this in the in the bracket of a survival knife. It's obviously not a fighting or stabbing tool, but it, as far as if you could only have one cutting implement, it holds a really good edge, and it's heavy enough to to, to um, for it to be used in many you know many applications, so levers or or, or um, you know chopping. But uh, yeah, the sheath. Just a standard, bog standard leather sheath. I think originally, as you can see here, they had a, a bit of a clasp on it, but um, that's come off. But it hangs on the belt, real comfortable knife as well, this one. Hangs on the belt, I literally, that's it, job done. 
it's never going to pop out. Um, it's a great tool, all rounder. So yeah, there's that one. I'm quite happy with that one. This next knife, um, this is the knife that I use as a survival knife. Um, I've had it some years now. Uh, I got it from an Israeli uh, years and years ago. It's a, a, a Gerber knife. Um, it was second hand when I got it off the guy. Um, this one here, as you can see the sheath, that's obviously a leg strap. You've got the main strap there that goes through your belt. You can have it on molly as well, upside down. Um, you know, there's a, no, a number of ways that you can mount this. It's got a great system, got its own sharpening device and everything else. But uh, that's the elasticated leg strap. You look a little bit like Rambo, to be honest, when you're strapped up to the nines with this stuff, you know. But uh, again, survival knife, you want a job that's going to, you know, a knife that's going to do the job. It's a tool, and you're going to depend on it. Then, you know, and great, I'm doing survival courses. This is the, you know, the bad boy that I, um, that I wear on my side. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's take it out and have a look at it. Put the shoes down over there. As you can see, it's well worked, guys. Um, it's not a sword, it's not massive. I think the blade length is about five inches, five and a bit inches. Um, as you can see, they're a bit like the um, Bear Grylls knife. Uh, it's a uh, serrated edge to there, and then just a, a, a straight bladed edge there. Um, uh, being Gerber, uh, a lot of you guys, I'm sure, are familiar with Gerber and the quality, a bit like Buck. Um, very, very good knife. I've got to say, this one, brilliant knife really chuffed with this um, one of my favorites if I, if I you know if I, if I tell the truth um, feels great to the hand I mean the rubbery grip lovely it's not gonna slip and it's the sort of knife straight away as soon as you put it to the hand it's the sort of knife that you think to yourself yeah I could give that I could give that a lot of grief and get away with it a um, couple of holes there in the handle and one there right at the pommel end you can see that I assume, uh, I've never tried it, but I assume that's tying it to a, to a um, shaft or, or, or a stave to make a spear. Um, personally, I'd rather make a spear using hazel or something like that and then open it up at the far end. Um, because obviously if you lose the spear, you've lost a stick, you lose the knife, you've, lo <laughs> you've lost your survival knife. So uh, uh, not the best, to be honest. You, obviously with this, you can make a lot of spears, but without it, you're stuffed. <laughs> So, um, yeah, there's that one. Like I say, it's a great knife. Um, and never let me down. So there's that one. Um, the last knife on this one, I've got a few other knives that I'll show you at a later date, perhaps in other videos. But I've got uh, another knife here. Um, you all know this knife. This is my favourite knife. Um, and I've spent a bit of time with the guy. He's a knife maker from the UK. And everybody knows him by now. Um, Jack Law, Sandy from Jack Law. Uh, this is a knife that I, that, um, I purchased from him some time ago. I think uh, a lot of guys have got these. Uh, this is really heavily worked. Sandy saw the knife himself. You can see the working, the hand rub on the uh, on the oak there. But um, I yeah I went, I went uh, all out on this one. Tapered tang. Um, it's the classic. It's not the scout. I'm having a scout built at the moment. Um, this is the classic Jack Law, as you can see there. There's Jack Law um, with mosaic pins and uh, red liners and all the rest of the stuff. I've got to be careful with this, this is me turning it around and I know how sharp it is. It's like a razor. Um, yeah, my favourite knife. Pommel's good. Um, Sandy's so critical about his own work. Uh, he, you know, he had a look at this one and you know he was happy with it, but he's getting better. He's a perfectionist. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys spent any time with him, but he is. He's everything that you think when it comes down to his knives. He's, a, he's an absolute, you know, perfectionist. Uh, I would nearly say an artist, because I mean, knives like this are really. He's at the top end of the scale, in my opinion. It's really, really good stuff. Um, hence, I've got another one being made, and yeah, I'll probably have a, a room full of these things <laughs> before long. But uh, yeah, all right, guys. Um, uh, I'm not going to bore you with it. Obviously, it's got the. Um, it's a belt. It's a belt. Um, a belt sheath there, just a standard sheath, and obviously he's got the um, the fire steel rod in there. But uh, Jack Law brand on there. I'll call it a day at that, guys. I just thought I'd show you just a, a brief video with some of the knives and the differences between the bushcraft knife and the survival knife. And basically, this is why I say to people, you know, we're looking at. Um, I take people uh, on bushcraft, the experience of bushcraft, or indeed week courses or, or weekends, and it's very much one-to-one -one sort of thing. 
Um, this is the knife that I use to bushcraft. This is the knife that I depend on. It's one I'm very proud to have on my on my side. If we're doing a survival survival situation, um, basically I'm you know getting hold of Hessian sacks. Um, we're getting polythene, second-hand polythene, old old canvases that are ripped, and we're basically surviving. The way that I term it for the guys that spend any time with me, guys and girls, is uh, survival is because you have to, bushcraft is because you want to. That's the way that I term it, anyway. But um, I hope that was uh, informative, guys. You can see the differences in these knives straight away. Um, one's Rambo, one isn't. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, okay guys, I'll uh, call it a day at that, uh, I'll get off. Um, I'm going to be doing other videos, Do you keep an eye out for my videos. I'm going to be doing another video on uh, my boats actually, later on this week, if I if I have five minutes. The Zodiac Inflatable, the aluminium boat, and other bits and pieces. I do a bit of fishing guiding on the Y as well, and the Y, the Usk, etc, etc. But uh, yeah, that'll be the next video, I assume, the, um, the boats. So uh, I'll call it a day at that guys, I'll get on with my bits, and... Uh, uh, leave your notes. If you've got any comments on these knives or, or you want to see anything different, by all means leave some comments and I'll do exactly what I can for you guys. And excuse the camera work and the wobbling around. It is all new to me and I'm just trying my best. So alright guys, have a good day and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much guys.